Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, today's episode, we are going to take a look at Santander Bank and their full credit card lineup for late 2021. So in typical fashion, we will first get to know a little bit more about Santander as a bank. We'll talk about the points, earnings, and redemptions. Then we'll take a look at their personal card. Yes, card, as in singular. But don't worry, there could be a potential use case you might want to hear about, so stay tuned anyways. We'll touch on their bank account bonuses as well, because they're quite good. And of course, we'll come out on the other end talking about that specific use case their card might solve and who this could be for and how you might earn a few dollars by going with Santander. So if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and press the subscribe button. Let's get to work. Okay, first things first, let's not waste any time. Let's start out by learning a little bit more about Santander as a bank. So here we have it, the classic Did You Know slide. So Santander Bank is a subsidiary of the Spanish Santander Group. It was founded back in 1902 as Sovereign Bank and then rebranded in 2013. This was done, of course, as after a series of acquisitions, and then they wanted to kind of solidify the bank under one name which makes sense, not an uncommon practice. They are headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts, currently sitting at the 35th largest bank in the U.S. with about $89 billion in assets. And then they have about 650 retail branches, so they're primarily northeastern focus. Now we move on to the interesting stuff here, the earnings and redemptions for the Santander card. So the card is going to earn cash back. Cash earned does not expire, which is always great to see. Now, interesting enough here, if you if your account is closed, either you decide to close it or Santander closes it, you will have 180 days to use the rewards, which is nice. And then the redemptions here, you've got some of the classics, statement credits, e-certificates, not really quite sure what those are, to be honest with you, merchandise and gift cards. Now, it is important to note, a lot of cash back cards do give you the option to redeem for travel, their flights, hotels, things like that through a travel portal. There is none of that here. So these are the only redemptions that you get, which should be fine because most of the time redeeming for travel doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But now let's take a look at why we're all here. And that is the Santander Bank personal credit card, the ultimate cash back card. So this card is sporting a $0 annual fee. And the multipliers here are going to be 3x on all purchases in your first year, up to $20,000 in spend. In addition to that, after year number one or after that $20,000 in spend in year one is hit, this card is going to default to a 1.5x back on all purchases. Now benefits here, you have no foreign transaction fees. And the one that is going to be interesting that we'll touch on in a second is no cash advance fees. And so there you have it, guys. That is the one card that Santander Bank offers. Now, at some point, I think they had multiple cards, but if you go to their site, this is the only one they have, weirdly enough. Now, of course, we will come back to this and talk about that interesting use case, but if you're on the fence right now about this video, don't worry, because we're going to take a look at their bank account bonuses next, as they do have some interesting ones, how you can kind of stack these two together, potentially. So let's jump over to that now. So here we have the Santander bank account bonuses. I've got one featured, but they do have personal and business accounts. So they, they generally run about once a quarter for each. So this one here, receive $400 by having direct deposits totaling $6,000 or more posted to the new Santander Select checking account within 90 days. And you could also get an additional $200 by maintaining an average daily balance of $6,500 or more for the first 90 days. Now, overall, for a bank account bonus, anytime you can grab a quick $600, that's really not that bad considering you have to deposit the $6,000 anyways. A quick funny story, I actually tried to apply in branch in New York because they don't have one in Michigan. And, you know, I thought they would go for it, but now they kind of they laughed me out of the building. But uh, hey, you should definitely avenge me and take advantage of this if you live in one of those 12 states. Now, with that said, let's take a look at the credit card again. Because again, on the surface, you're probably like, why did you make me watch this video with just one card? Well, there is an interesting use case. So you can see instead of a sign-up bonus for this card, what they're doing is they're offering you that 3x back on up to 20000 in spend. That's interesting because 3x back on anything would be a really good catch-all card, at least for that first year, that first 20k and spend tranche. It's actually probably one of the best catch-all cards out there for that time period. However, if you bring back the card, what really stood out to me is they have no cash advance fee. So why do I care? What is a cash advance fee? Well, you do have the option to take out cash against your credit card. I mean, you should never really do this because the rates you're going to have to borrow against for that cash is ridiculously high. So generally, I don't advise to do that. 
However, there's also something else in the credit card space that kind of falls under cash advance, though it's not directly a cash advance. You see, a lot of times in the terms and conditions, anytime you want to go buy like gift cards, like those Visa reloadable gift cards, for example, or do credit card funding for a bank account, uh, in the terms and conditions of a lot of banks, those are counted as um, cash equivalents, right? things that you're basically, they know it's kind of like a form of manufactured spending. So generally what you have to do to get around this is phone into your bank and say, hey, can you lower my cash advance fee down to zero? That way, if you go to fund a bank account with your credit card and it does trigger a cash advance, it won't charge you a fee. It will just decline. Now, Again, if you go down the terms and conditions for this unlimited cash or this ultimate cash card, you can see again, Santander is specifying one retail transactions and they're specifically saying no cash equivalents like gift cards. However, all banks say that. Chase says that and I use my Chase Inc. Unlimited, my Freedom Unlimited to fund many a bank account and rack up very easy points. Okay, so why is this interesting? Well, I use the Ink Unlimited and the Freedom Unlimited because that's 1.5x. That's my highest catch-all multiplier to do bank account funding or to buy gift cards with. However, if you were to get this card, and then you could go about doing things like this, and there's no cash advance fee, then there's no risk of you, you know, triggering a fee if you want to fund a, a fund a bank account or buy your Visa reloads, what have you. I mean, I don't know the extent of it. Could you actually go and buy poker chips from a casino? Yet to be seen. However, that's what makes this potentially interesting. Interesting. And again, yes, it's in the terms and conditions, but all banks have that. So I don't have any data points. So this is partly a solicitation for data points if anyone knows any out there. But that's the interesting use case for this card that I found. It could make it worth considering. Again, if you go ahead and you were to max this out, then you'd end up with about $600 back for a sign-in bonus on a no annual fee card. Plus, you'd have a really good catch-all if you wanted that as well. So that is why we went ahead and did this. Now, overall, you know, if that use case works, then great. Again, I'm pretty sure it would on some things. I find it hard to believe a regional bank would have blocked all of these potential avenues if Chase doesn't even block these potential avenues, but it does happen. I, U.S. Bank blocks my triple cash card with them from any bank account funding. It's just an automatic decline, even though there is no cash advance fee on it. So again, data points listed down below if you have any, please and thank you. So with that being said, year number one, I think this could be an interesting card if you live in one of those states that you could get approved for. Now year number two and beyond, obviously you're going to do much better elsewhere and a 2% card. Again, 2% is kind of the table minimum, though again, no foreign transaction fee, so could potentially be worth keeping around if you wanted a no annual fee card for no foreign transaction fees. But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance. My question for you guys is, one, let me know if you have any experience using this Ultimate Cash that card from Santander or let me know what you think about that potential use case is it worth it to you guys to basically get a, a 3x back on your credit card funding catch all for at least 20k and then kind of just sock drawer for thereafter love to hear your thoughts on that but anyways guys that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching I'll talk to you in the next one